Welcome to Kenji's Kitchen. Today, I am going to show you some of the, my pantry items. Many of the, my students asked me, Kenji, what kind of pantry items do you usually keep in your pantry? And today, I am going to explain Japanese soy sauce. And did you know there are many type of soy sauces in Japan and we use for the cookings? And uh, let me explain some of the, uh, those soy sauces today. No, no. So let's start talking about a little bit of background and the history of soy sauce. Soy sauce was invented in China and introduced to Japan about 3,000 years ago. And uh, as name indicate, soy sauce is made of soybeans. However, as Japanese do often, they tweak a little bit of those items and they started using wheat. So Japanese soy sauce actually include or indeed having the, uh, the ingredients of wheat for the, uh, the soy sauce. And uh, another ingredient we add is, of course, salt. And most importantly, we use koji bacteria. Koji creates a fermentation and uh, it basically makes the, the flavor of those soy sauces, right? So first, let me introduce the, uh, the most common soy sauce we usually use at the home and restaurants. And this is koikuchi shoyu, which is a dark soy sauce. And a dark soy sauce, as you can see, it is darker color and has like a great umami and everything. It is used for cooking as well as dipping many, many different ways. And if you think about at the restaurant, the red cap soy sauce you see on the table, that is a usually dark soy sauce. And the second soy sauce I'd like to explain is usukuchi shoyu, which is, as you can see, the color is so much lighter and often this soy sauce is used in the area of Kansai, which is Osaka, Kyoto, that area. And they care about really color of the food much more than the other area. And this light color soy sauce actually gives lighter color. Therefore, they prefer to use these. And uh, that sometimes people get confused this as the, uh, the light uh, salt soy sauce or reduced salt soy sauce, which is a green cap one you often see at the restaurant. But these are different. This, actually the color is lighter, but it has even higher contents of uh, salt. So, but the color is much lighter and because of the saltiness is higher, you use less portion too. That's create a lighter, nice color. You can use for uh, udon making or udon soup making or ramen soup making, many different way to create really lighter color of the food. All right, so let's talk about the, uh, the shiro shoyu or white soy sauce. And as you can see, the color is so much lighter than even uh, light soy sauce. And the color is even like a light amber color. And this is often used at the restaurant or more professional use because people who prefer the, uh, the soy sauce flavor but no really interfering with dark soy sauce color to the food. As you remember, Japanese eat with our eyes and often used this for tamagoyaki. If you want to have a really nice yellow light color tamagoyaki, you want to use this shiro shoyu. Or like if you are making a takikomi gohan, which is a lot of ingredients is cooked with rice, if you use darker soy sauce, of course it becomes more brownish color. But if you use white soy sauce, it's going to be clear, nice colors. And uh, the ingredients wise interesting too, because actually Shiro Shoyu, they use more wheat, wheat than soybean itself. So, it is a little difficult to call soy sauce anymore, but uh, still like uh, we call white soy sauce. And it has actually the highest salt contents as well. And the next 
uh, I introduce saishikomi shoyu, which is a twice fer fermented or double fermented uh, soy sauce, which create much deeper and much more umami flavors for soy sauce. And the usual soy sauce takes about six months to make the soy sauce or fermentation process. But the, because this saishikomi shoyu process is like a twice same kind of process, and as you recall, the, uh, the soy sauce uses salt, but the second fermentation process, they use already produced soy sauce in place of uh, salt itself. So it actually gives a much, much deeper flavor. Of course, because it just takes twice as uh, time consuming as well as uh, uh, more process, it usually has a little more expensive pricing uh, also. And it is great for dipping. For example, if we are eating sashimi or sushi, you maybe prefer the, uh, the saishikomi shoyu because it gives like really great enhanced umami flavors for the dishes. And last uh, major soy sauce is tamari soy sauce. And many of you maybe have heard of tamari soy sauce uh, besides the, uh, the dark soy sauce because in US, this became quite a popular items. The one of the reason is usually tamari soy sauce does not have any wheat. It is more similar to the, uh, the original Chinese fermentation process. They do not use uh, wheat itself for the, uh, the process. But you sometimes have to be careful because some of the tamari soy sauce even use uh, the wheat because wheat creates the sweetness and the more umami flavors so for soy sauces. But uh, this process itself takes a little bit longer than the normal uh, procedure because it doesn't have any wheat. And the product becomes much more thicker kind of texture too. And this is great for dipping as well as simmering kind of like a red meat uh, fish such as uh, tuna fish. If we are going to simmer with uh, soy sauce, it gives much more flavor to the uh, dish itself. And uh, it's, it's really good soy sauce. And lastly, this is interesting. So in Kyushu, we use actually a little bit of different type of soy sauce. Uh, it is actually a little bit sweeter. And uh, indeed, if I read the, uh, the, this bottle, it has a little bit of added sweetness, the, uh, the, such as uh, the sugar and also caramels. And uh, many of my friends out of Kyushu, whenever they visit Kyushu and when start eating sashimi or any kind of Jap uh, the Japanese dishes, they usually surprise in the sweetness of uh, soy sauce itself in Kyushu. But I've grown up over there, so I prefer to use this, uh, this uh, type of soy sauce and you cannot usually get at the market in general. So whenever I go back to Kyushu, I purchase this a little bit of sweeter soy sauce. But it's really great soy sauce. I love to use this and uh, this is like, a, for me, <laughs> must have pantry items in my kitchen. So today I explained some of the other major soy sauce in Japan and I hope you enjoyed those uh, finding out those differences of the uh, soy sauce and uh, usage of those different soy sauces for your Japanese cooking. Happy cooking!